How's it going everybody? Today I'm going to be showing you how to build your own custom vertical terrarium or vivarium. Now if you go and try to buy one of these online they're rather expensive. They're like 100 to 160 bucks depending on what size and quality and all that stuff. So I'm going to be trying to show you how to build it much cheaper for like 20 to 30 bucks. And that's actually easier than you might think. All you have to do is go to your local Walmart and pick up one of these. Just a normal horizontal cheap fish tank. Now the goal here is to disassemble this cheap tank and rearrange the pieces into the vertical terrarium that we want. So as you can see, I'm starting with the top and sliding the blade up underneath the lip of this top and just cutting the silicon that is holding it together. With that done, we're going to actually make a cut on each one of the corners to make it easier to pull each side of this top off. So at this point, with a little finagling, you should be able to pull each one of the sides off and that takes care of the top plastic. So now it's down to the bottom piece and same exact process, you're sliding the knife between the plastic and the glass to cut the silicone so that you can remove it piece by piece. And now we start one of the more difficult processes, which is cutting the seams so that you can separate each piece of glass individually. As you can see, you just gently push the razor blade in from each side, and then you can actually peel the silicon off, leaving barely any between. With that taken care of, you're able to actually gently slide the razor blade through between each piece of glass, and just be very gentle on this part because you don't want to start a hairline fracture or crack it or anything like that. Just gently work the razor blade between each piece of glass little by little to the point where you're able to actually separate them. Just like this, nice and clean, nice and easy, each piece comes apart one at a time. Once you have the pieces separated, you start the long, grueling process of scraping all the old silicon off. You want to be careful with the edges of the glass because it will dull your razor blades so fast. But yeah, just take your time and clean the pieces off one by one, get all the old silicon off so you have a nice, fresh surface to lay the new silicon onto. Just like that, nice and clean. All right, so there you have it. The tank is fully disassembled. Here's all the pieces of the glass. We got all the silicon nice and removed, got the pieces cleaned up, and now it's time to figure out how we're going to rearrange them to make a vertical terrarium rather than the horizontal aquarium that we started with. All right, now whenever it comes to assembling the tank into a vertical structure, we need to just think about the previous horizontal tank flipped up on its side. So what used to be one of the end pieces is now going to be the bottom piece. What used to be the bottom piece is now going to be the back piece. And then the two pieces that used to be the sides are still going to be the sides. So this would be like the old horizontal tank just put up on one of its ends. And that brings us to the final piece. This used to be one of the other end pieces, but now it's going to be the front piece. And as you can see, it's too tall at the moment. If you compare it to how tall the back piece is, this takes up more than half the height of the total terrarium. And while we want this piece here to provide a water holding area on the bottom that could act as a reservoir for the water fountain or a little pond or something like that, we don't want it to be too high because it'll make it more difficult for us to actually get in and work in the terrarium, as well as just making it aesthetically not look quite as good. So I'm going to take this piece and cut it in half, and that might not be as difficult as you think. I'll show you how to do it, it's super simple. All right, so here's the end piece we're going to be cutting, and here are the tools we're gonna to be using. This is just a basic glass cutting tool. You can find it at your local hardware store for really cheap. This right here is just a ruler to kind of help me keep straight as I go down. So I'm going to turn the piece sideways like this. Then I'm going to put the ruler where I want to make the cut. Then I'm going to take some masking tape and just kind of lightly hold down the ruler so it's not slipping too much as I'm trying to make the cut. And with that set up, we're going to take this edge right here hold it against the ruler, and we're going to make a couple smooth passes. 
So with the glass nice and scored, we're going to pick up the piece. We're going to put this pencil underneath it. And one steady move, we're just going to snap it in half. There we go. We cut the glass. All right, so here's the piece we just cut. And if you put it up here on the front, you can see it's a lot more natural. If you compare it to the height of the back piece, you see that it doesn't come up too terribly high. This should be good to go. Now with all the pieces cut, we're ready to mask them off for the silicon process. Here's how we do that. All right, so ideally we would be working with a bigger table, but it doesn't really matter that much because we're going to be going one piece at a time anyway. Starting with the bottom base piece, we're going to lay this green masking tape in a way so that you have about a quarter inch strip along each side. Now that we have the base piece taken care of, we're going to do the same exact process on all the other pieces. The thing to keep in mind though is where the inside of that piece will be. So for example, this front piece right here, we know is going to be going up against the base piece like this. So we need to mask off this, this, and this side. And then for both side pieces, again, this piece will be standing up facing here. So we're going to need to get these three sides masked off. And the same basic logic applies for the other pieces. You put them where they would be, you know which sides you need to mask off, and go for it. As long as it looks something similar to this, you should be good to go. All right, we've got all the pieces masked up and ready to go. All we have to do is assemble them so that we can apply the silicon. Now doing that is a little bit tricky because you're trying to balance all these big pieces and stuff like that, but I'm gonna show you a method that makes it a lot easier. Take one of those pieces, in this case a side piece, flip it to the side that is not masked, and apply a couple strips of this tape to the back of it. As you apply these pieces of tape, you want to roll over a little bit and just tack it on so it stays in place without gripping to the table. All right, three should do it. All right, so we have our three pieces of tape applied to the side piece. Now we wanna make sure that it's aligned really well on the base. Then we're going to take the back piece and stand it up. And we're going to make sure that we have this back edge nice and lined up just right. So with the back piece and the side piece lined up just right, we can take these little handles that we made and simply wrap them around and hold these two pieces together nice and tight. So now, as you can see, these two pieces hold themselves up on their own just with these three simple pieces back here and the edges are nice and aligned. So we're ready to start putting the other pieces on. And there you have it. Everything's masked up. Everything is attached, ready to go. We're ready to start the silicone process. All right, so before you can start applying the silicone, you want to clean all these seams of any kind of grease, dust, dirt, anything like that. So I'm gonna take this microfiber towel and I'm going to put some isopropyl alcohol on it. And I'm going to wipe each one of these seams nice and clean. All right, so with the seams nice and clean, we've got our gloves on, we've got our silicone, it's time to actually apply it. 
Now this is a little difficult to show because it's a tight space and the camera's in the way, but I'm gonna show you one line now, do all the other seams the same exact way. Basically what you want to do is run one smooth line from bottom to top. Apparently I forgot the meaning of the word smooth because this is not a smooth line. I probably put on way too much there, but with the silicon laid, you take your finger and you rub it nice and smooth from bottom to top. So that's how you silicon these seams together. I'm gonna get on with the rest of them and I'll see you in a second. All right, so the silicon is applied to the seams and that's good to go. But before we leave it to cure, we need to take off the masking from the inside so that the silicon doesn't cure on it and make it difficult to remove. So you wanna be nice and easy, just pull this tape away really slowly because you don't wanna make a mess with the silicon and get it all over on the clean pieces. All right, so now this thing needs to sit for a full 24 hours to make sure that the silicon cures correctly and it'll be nice and waterproof. But in the meantime, there's other things we can work on. We still have to worry about the lid and the door. Now for the frame of the lid, I'm going to be using this angled aluminum because it's super cheap, super easy to work with and all that. You can find it at a local hardware store in the metal section, it's not too hard to come by. To build the lid, start by getting nice measurements of all sides of the top. Then get your piece of angled aluminum, mark it, and make a nice clean cut. Try to keep it as straight as possible. You'll also want to remove the rough edges from the cutting. Next, mix up a nice batch of JB Weld, apply it to the corners. As you can see, I kind of have this little rig set up so it'll stay in the correct position as it dries. And then it's going to be on to the painting process. You want to make sure you apply plenty of primer before the paint so it doesn't peel off. All right, so I got the lid painted, and now while we wait for it to dry, it's time to move on to working on the door. Now this will be a sliding door, so first you want to measure out the piece of glass you'll be using. As you see, I'm just kind of taping it in place, and I'm actually using the masking tape itself to mark out where I want to cut it. And of course, I'm using the same method that I showed you earlier in the video, just mark it, score it, put a pencil underneath it, snap it. It's super simple, super easy. How could you ever mess the, okay. Go get a piece of plexiglass, mark it, score it, snap it, preferably without breaking it the wrong way. Move on to working on the track for the door, which is this track aluminum. You just mark it, cut it, basically the same process as the angle aluminum. And while the paint is drying on it, we're going to add the screen mesh to the lid. So you just lay it out on the mesh, cut the mesh to size, and then using super glue, you apply a bead and tack it into place and that's more than enough to hold the screen in place. So now you can install the lid and get ready for putting the door on the front. And to do that, all you have to do is just apply the super glue so that you can put the tracks into place and then the door literally just slides in and out of those tracks because, you know, it's a sliding door. All right, so there you have it. It's a vertical terrarium with a sliding door and a vented top, and it's perfect for any little small frog or just generally something that prefers vertical room rather than floor space. And in the next video, I'm going to be turning this into a little home for my little frog, Moki. Now I do need to point out something, and that is the door. Unfortunately, you can't just use the original aquarium because there's not enough material to cover this front, but a cheap piece of plexiglass or normal glass, whichever one you wanna go for, isn't that expensive. And then getting the angled aluminum and the aluminum track isn't that expensive either. Overall, I think the total cost of this build is about 50 something dollars. Overall, it's way cheaper than the 100 to $175 vertical terrariums that you'll find out there. And that's what DIY is all about doing it yourself so that you can save money, but also just enjoy the process. And it's so much more fulfilling whenever you know, hey, I made this from scratch. But 
With that being said, enough of me rambling on and on. I hope you enjoyed the video. Look forward to the next video, like I said, where I make this into a full-blown terrarium for my little frog. And uh, yeah, until next time, stay happy, healthy, wealthy, and wise. I'll figure this outro out someday. <laughs> Peace.